Today I'll show you how to fix 10 common but overlooked mistakes which are killing your PC's performance. I've made some of these mistakes myself in the past and chances are you're doing at least a few of them right now. So after you finish the video, comment how many of these mistakes you made. The first mistake is not using a local Windows account. There's two types of Windows accounts. When you use a Microsoft account, you share way more data to Microsoft, there's a lot more bloatware and there's syncing services running in the background constantly. So here's how you can fix it. Go to settings, accounts, find your info and simply press sign in with a local account instead. You will ask you like, are you sure you want to switch to a local account? Press next, type in your pin. Then you can make some new account info. You can also not make a password for your PC, which is pretty nice because it saves some time when you boot. After that, just press sign out and finish. The second mistake is not optimizing your PC properly or over tweaking your PC. Something I see happening a lot is people using tens, if not hundreds of different guides or tools to optimize their PC. I actually used to do this myself to my old laptop when I first discovered PC tweaking in 2020. And trust me, it was a terrible idea. I'd recommend sticking to one tool like our free utility or our premium tweaking utility, which you can check both of them out on our website, exmtweaks.com. Our free utility does all of the essential optimizations and exm premium will completely optimize your PC for the best possible FPS and latency. And if you can't get premium, you can also use optimizations from reliable people like Corvi on top of our free utility. TLDR, don't over tweak your PC and stick to reliable sources. The third mistake is not capping your FPS properly. Probably about 99% of people cap their FPS by just setting it to their refresh rate in the game settings. But there's a better way you can do this. It will significantly improve your 1% lows. So the way you properly set this up depends on what GPU you have. So for Nvidia GPUs, head over to control panel and 3D settings. And instead of using the in-game FPS cap, use max frame rate as your FPS cap. So I personally have my FPS at 240, so I'm gonna set it to 240 FPS and then just apply. So for AMD users, you can use the Radeon Chill feature and all you have to do is set both the minimum and maximum FPS cap to the same value, which is your refresh rate. Afterwards, open up your game of choice, which you want to use. Just go to settings. So you want to set your frame limit to unlimited and also disable Nvidia Reflex low latency. Also, don't mind my settings. I just reinstalled Windows, so they're default. And the last thing you have to do is make sure that FSO or full screen optimizations are enabled. So join our Discord server, link in the description, head over to EXM free resources and download the enable FSO file. Then run it as administrator. Boom, that's all you have to do. So the fourth mistake is not using a custom power plan. The default power plans or even power plans like ultimate performance don't optimize all of the hidden settings, but here's how you can do it in a few clicks. So head back to our Discord server and right above in EXM free resources, Resources, you have the power plan menu. So just download this and run it as administrator. It will download it, press OK and import it. Afterwards, it will open up the power options menu. And in here, all you have to do is just select it. And if you have any unnecessary ones, just delete them. I'll still stick to using our premium power plan as it's slightly better. If you want to get that one, exmtweaks.com. The next few mistakes are going to be related to your peripherals. So the first mistake is not utilizing the onboard memory with your mouse and keyboard. So what I've seen in some people is they have like a G Pro Super Lite, but they don't use the onboard memory mode. They just keep uh, the Logitech software running in the background, which of course is not good for your performance. That's why you should just turn on the onboard memory mode. And again, if you have a Logitech mouse and you want to configure your onboard memory settings, I'll leave this app in the description. It's really useful. The sixth mistake is not updating your firmware so check in your peripheral software where you can update your firmware as you can see mine is up to date but for example on my keyboard as you can see i have a firmware update available and you should always install these so the seventh mistake is having rgb enabled on your keyboard and mouse this is a pretty small thing but having rgb enabled causes your mouse and keyboard to constantly ping the rgb controller which just increases cpu cycles and overall system resources in the background so i would highly recommend you to just disable it i don't think i need to show you how to do that but most pros play with their RGB disabled for this exact reason. And the last keyboard and mouse related tip is a very important one, and that is using a proper DPI. Using low mouse DPI will cause inconsistent pooling rates and slightly higher latency and pixel skipping. I personally recommend using 1600 DPI, but if you're using 800 and you're used to it, it's not that big of a deal. But for DPI such as 400, I would highly recommend you to increase it to 1600 or 800. And of course you will have to divide your sensitivity by two. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
inventory. And I can guarantee that when you switch from 400 to 1600 DPI, your mouse will feel a bit smoother. So the ninth mistake is having outdated BIOS firmware installed on your motherboard. Having recent firmware installed on your motherboard is a good practice because it will improve stability, fix bugs, and much more. I've also seen some people get a big FPS boost by updating their BIOS, but that probably won't happen to everyone. I'll put a guide in the description on how to do it. Full credit to Mark Sot for the guide. And yeah, if you want to update your BIOS, follow that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is focusing too much on low processes. This is not technically a mistake, but it's a pretty widespread misconception that having an incredibly low process count means that you'll have zero delay or it will improve your FPS. But the difference between 30 and 90 processes is almost non-existent. Every day I see at least 10 people in my Discord flexing having a really low process count, which they achieve by disabling literally every single service except the ones that are required for your PC to even boot, which they completely broke their PC's functionality for a marginal performance gain. I would still highly recommend the debloating your PC, disabling useless processes such as Xbox and Bluetooth if you use them, but there's very few reasons why I would want to have an extremely low process count. I'll link in a blog post explaining this more further and showing some benchmark statistics about it in the description so if you want to research this go ahead and yeah thanks for watching today's video make sure to like and subscribe see you guys in the next video